Welcome to the channel, guys. You got me f***ed up. No, let's go. Where you will stun yourself with the interesting and hidden parts of the Hardcore Pond. Lay yourself ready for the embarking journey of the Hardcore Pond thrills. From Les's anger to the Pond Stars fighting, which will make you enjoy the curiosity it will make. You have no idea what's going on anymore. You need to retire, and I need to take over. Interesting fight over a hundred dollars. Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, gather round for the drama unfolding at the pawn store. We've got a black woman strutting into her own zone, eyeing the pawn treasures. Oh, the suspense. She's in a chit-chat with Ashley, and things are looking intriguing. Is she here to shop or just to spice up the day? The plot thickens. Hi, excuse me. Yeah. Hi, I'm looking for a watch. Buy me about $100. I got $100 to spend. Plot twist alert. Our leading lady settles on a band and confidently asks for the moolah. But hold your horses. No haggling? That's suspiciously smooth. Ashley, ever the skeptic, checks the currency. What does she get? A gift card. <laughs> oh, the audacity. No. What is this? It's a $100 gift card. $100 right, gift card? Ashley questions the magic gift card, and our heroine insists it's worth a whopping $100. Cue the showdown. Ashley's like, this isn't Hogwarts. Your card won't make the price disappear. Did you see a swiper? Look, you the ugliest two sisters I've ever seen in my life. The tension builds, and it's not your regular pawn shop banter. It's turning into a comedy of errors. That is not our gift card. Hold on to your hats, folks. Ashley's patience wears thin, and she's ready to unleash the ultimate weapon, the security guard. This customer's pushing it. Brace yourselves, she's being escorted out, shouting like a soap opera diva. Get my money! Hey, Byron, show her where the money's at. Get my money! He's gonna show you where the money Did she just challenge the security guard? Hilarious. He's escorting her out like he's the hero in an action movie. Man, they took my money, man! Somebody won a hundred dollars! In this surprising tale of pawn shop charade, our leading lady turned a routine purchase into a blockbuster showdown. Who knew a gift card could cause so much chaos? Les Gold's Temperament Control So, here are two black men coming to Seth, probably for some purchase. Man, I need to get about uh, six, seven iPads, man, and uh, a couple TVs, man, three, four TVs. They're asking for the iPads, probably, and, and see, there they go. They're asking for all the iPads without asking for the money. What a ridiculous purchase. <laughs> um, their fierce behavior is getting attention, and Les Gold is here to watch upon them. Seth asked for $25 for all these pieces. Oh. 25 piece, my man. 25 what? 25 dollars. A piece? Man. Okay, the matter is getting serious. They're arguing. The men are not ready to pay 25 dollars each. And here we go. They smash some scrambled money into the table. Holy crap. See, man, we got money, You spend good money in this motherfucker. Time, man. And your foreheads who you always be that. Les Gold is joining them, quite furious, arguing to pay the reasonable price. Les Gold tried to handle. But the matter is getting serious, people. They are insisting on getting them all for a few dollars and forcing them to give it all. Seth and Les got angry and tried to sort it out. Nothing higher, bro. Oh, Nothing we can't higher. sell you those, I'm sorry. We ain't leaving this mother till we get the deal we want. Les is making a mysterious move and asks Seth to find a bag. Less infuriated, gathering all the money together and what is going to be done now? Ashley noticed and got into the argument. Both men continued speaking rubbish and bullying. Oh no. This is exactly the kind of situation that we don't need right now. Les is taking their money and both of the men are out of the store. He is bashing and going outside to let them out while the men are constantly challenging and bullying the Pawn Stars. Really? Well, how about this? How about f you? How about f huh? Yeah. A big deal. So there came a woman at a pawn shop to sell something. She inquired she wanted to have some money for her grandmother's funeral. So, she is definitely trying to have some money by hook or by crook. The stones that I found out of my grandmother's house, she just passed not too long ago. I'm just trying to get enough money for her funeral. Les told the woman to come later until they find out whether it's worthy or not. Come back in a few hours, I'll let you know what they are and how much they're worth. Well, Ashley, she's having a great clash with it. She's continuously saying that it's a waste of time. There are no stones that are real. I'm going to show it to Bob. He'll make the final call. It's a waste of You'll time, see. Dad. But the argument carries on and Les decides to check them out for if they are real or not. Les is checking the gems and seeing, oh my god, it's not a regular gem or stone. Rather, it is a precious ruby. Oh my god. What is it? Check it out. 
Holy They're all surprised. They're not expecting this. Ashley checked it herself from the magnifier to check it, and it is a happy deal for Les. And here's the woman coming again. Ashley is shocked and Les is excited to break the news to her. Ashley broke it to her and told her about the gems. She's surprised as if she did not know the real ruby's worth, but now she will know and definitely she's gonna be happiest. So Les told her that he will give $10,000 for this ruby and it was really more than her expectations. This is a Burmese ruby. So we'll be able to give you $10,000. Oh my God, are you serious? She was the happiest, and this deal made Les Day the perfect of all. Religion Bullying of Les Okay, here we got a female Karen at the counter at a pawn shop. She's looking quite serious and angry. She inquired the manager at the counter to do her work ASAP, and in no time she got angry. How pathetic is that? Like, how can someone be so impatient? God knows what has gotten into this woman. She's asking for her gloves, which were sold before, and now she's claiming that she has not sold them. How creepy is it? You sold the clubs to us. You didn't pawn them. I did not sell my clubs. She continued to argue until Les Gold came, and now who knows what is going to be the next move of Les as he is angry. And now Les is dealing with her, and she is constantly fighting for her gloves, which are not really hers now. Let me make this perfectly honest. Let me let make me... it perfectly clear. This is a very sad commentary. And see, holy sh she attacked Les's religion. It is really unethical, and that lady is getting more than anything. Anyone down on the lock you make big fat money off of in your Jewish ways. The Les got angry a lot and are just screaming at her and asking her to get out. She should get out, actually. Get get your anger the out of here. Anger management Don't term. talk about my Jewish religion, shit? you Les lost his control, but the woman is still bullying him of his religion. No, man, she's putting herself in a dig. She should behave. Okay, Les gets out of the cell and is about to kill that lady. The lady sitting in her car was still yelling and making him furious about his religion. Christina stealing money. Here's something curious happening. Les seemed to be very angry over that man. Don't know what that man was doing there and what he had done, which made Les angry. Let's see what will happen. Go get security, then go get Ashley and Seth, and then bring me in Christina. You got it. The security cameras are on check. What's cooking around, guys? Oh, Christina is on account as she is caught stealing. Les is asking her about her act. See, she's just acting like she has not done anything, but she has not stolen anything. Les is looking hell furious like he will kill her for her cheating. Ashley and Les are asking questions about her deals. Seth and other Pawn Stars present there are so curious. Les is asking how she does that. Too strange how clever she is. She sold things for a higher amount but reported less amount and stole the leftover money. Everyone there is so angry. What is going to happen now? Set me free, Christina, and I will open up that door. Les is curious as he is sure that Christina cannot do this kind of stuff alone. There must be some other people supporting her in his play. Tell me something that's going to get you out of jail today. Who's doing to me today? Les is taking it to extremes and asking again and again if there's another one with her. Have you been working with any other employee? No. All Same alone way. without any knowledge of anybody else stealing from us, correct? Oh, God. He asked her to send her to jail if she did not speak the truth. Oh, my God. Things are getting worse. She's not telling anything. Les is definitely going to send her out of the pawn shop to sell. Mother-daughter fighting. So there's a woman coming with her daughter. She showed some pieces of bottle and a collection of stamps. According to her, it is worthy, but actually it is not. Les asked her that it is not that worthy. Oops, the mother got angry at Les, because for her, they are worth everything. What will happen now? So what you got? I got some really expensive stuff. Show me. Oh my God, the daughter charged a fire against her mother. What the heck, you better don't. No, you Girl, what the hell wrong with you? She triggered her and insulted her for her useless collections and, oh my god, look, they're about to have a deadly fight. Oh god, the mother scratched her daughter. Les is stunned. Hell, they don't want get the off my is wrong with you? The mother and daughter are having extreme fighting conditions. Everyone around is watching them. Les is stunned and did not have any idea that this would happen or it might be very casual to them. Okay, the guard has been called. The mother is still beating her daughter well and doesn't want to argue anymore. 
Both are screaming at each other. The security guard is letting them out. Oh my god, how embarrassing and strange it is to see mother-daughter fighting like that. The security guard gets them out and everyone is laughing at them. Astonished, Les. I had to intervene. Okay, okay. Man threatening Les. So a man entered the pawn shop and headed straight towards Les. Seems like it would be a happy deal with that cool customer. Okay, the man had an anniversary today, and so Les is both are sharing some joys together. I need to get a watch for my wife's anniversary. It's not your anniversary too? Well, yeah, it is mine too. That man wants to sell his gold chain and to buy a watch in its replacement. Well, Les will decide if it's real or not. And what will he pay for it to the man? Oops, things are turning around. The chain is not real. Well, do you really want me to tell you what I think? I tell me the truth. They're not real. The man is claiming it to be real since it is his grandmother's time. But Les is saying it might be real, but it's not because the gold does not have that shine. This might be the saddest thing to happen to that man's wife on her anniversary. What do you mean they're not real? This is older than both of us. It probably is. That man is getting quite furious as he is firm in his belief that it is real. Okay, I don't think it is, but if you say it is, we'll go. What are you going to give me for this? I want to trade for a watch. Holy shit. That man is forcing Les to buy that useless chain. <laughs> Give me a, let me see what you got in watches and take these. I have a lot of watches, but I'm not taking those. And now the things got worse as the man has taken Les's family into it. Okay, I've seen your wife. Lucky you. Yeah, lucky me. I don't think so. Les is going to kill that man. He's not stopping from bullying Les for his family. Okay, that man is constantly dragging Les's family into it. Listen, mother there's two things you don't talk about. What's that? My wife and my family. Oh. Now everyone around got concerned. Les is hell angry. Ashley is stunned to see the man threatening Les for his wife and family. The little boy in that fat ass daughter of yours. The security guard came to get that man out, and Les is not getting relaxed. So he got out of his cabin as well to take that man to hell. Les held him from the other hand and dragged him out of the shop. You know what, mother? Come out over here. Get off of me, don't. Where you got to go? Why do you got to push? That man yelling around, constantly bullying Les and his family. That man started mysterious marching and definitely everyone wanted him to just get dead. And Les as well wanted him to march out of the cliff. Seth and Les's fight. Les and Ashley seemed to be discussing some serious stuff. Felt like something serious had happened. Everyone is so strange there. Aha, Seth is coming. Quite mysterious and in wrath. He has asked Les to come in and join him. One way or another makes no difference to me, it's up to you. Come talk to me. Something is definitely happening, which has made Seth so furious. Let's see what is the matter. Oh my god, Seth questioned less about his policy changing. He's inquiring why he has changed the policy. You tell my guys after I said policy that the policy is being changed to your old bull ways? Both are yelling like anything at each other. Seth is screaming that why Les has made changes to the things while Les is getting angry because of Seth's ruthless behavior. It's gonna be very serious. Everyone is intrigued by what is the matter. Les has claimed Seth to pay $40,000 back as per the change policy. Give me a 40,000 square foot free for all back there? That's no policy. What do you think brought us to here, Seth? But Seth is not getting anything. They are having a fight. Oh my God, Seth put fuel into the fire by saying that he can handle the shop better than him. Les is stunned. Everyone around is listening and is terrified of what will happen now outdated. I can run this place better. I know exactly what needs to be done. I want the opportunity to run this place. Les is going to take everything very seriously. God knows where that anger will lead both of them to. Les is tailoring Seth that he cannot do anything and without Les the pawn shop would close. No one can run the shop better than Les. But things are not getting cool. Seth yelled after Les and got out of the cabin. Ashley listening to all this is making fun. God, it is not that serious. You have no idea what's going on anymore. You need to retire, and I need to take over. Ashley should take the things to the ground and take it seriously. Well, Les, in his anger, was constantly getting furious over that debate. Man got beaten by Les. Well, people, there came a black young boy towards Ashley's counter. Ashley asked him, greetings. So, is he here to sell something? So you want to just pawn it, right? Because you want to be able to get it back? Yeah. How much are you looking for? Hope so, it will be a good deal for that man, until or unless something happens. He is here to sell the ring of his grandmother who just passed away. Well, a really sad news, but it won't affect the deal because business is always a business. 
He wants to sell this ring to have some money in order to make some funeral arrangements. Well, whatever the cause is, um, Ashley checked it out and to surprise, it wasn't real. Um, do you have anything else? Because this unfortunately is not real. It is a fake gold, so it can't make money. This statement made the man angry. He started shouting, how strange and creepy it is. He should not react this way. If the ring is not real gold, it is not someone's issue. He should take it out with himself. He started yelling at Ashley, and Ashley is just controlling herself. I need to speak with somebody else because you irritate me flat out. She does not want to create some mess, but he's not stopping. I think he wants to insult himself. It will make things go mad. He is extremely screaming and trying to hit her out. That crazy man is calling death. The guard came who held him up and set him onto the floor. He's trying to beat Ashley and getting over her. Well, the guard is keeping him away. Less is here. Matter is going to be very serious. That man is not understanding the matter, still trying to fight. Guard taking him out of the shop. Less is joined and is getting angry over that man. Less and the guard beat him and get him out. Oh my god, what a fight! That crazy man. Lady yelling at shop. Hey there, welcome to the Pawn Shop Records, where things get crazier than a wacky TV show. Today's main character is this lady with a cap and a cool style who thinks she's the Pawn Shop Queen. Alright, I'm Terry Austin. I came to get my ring, my computer, and my 16 inch TV. So, watching this, she walks in, demands a ring and TV, but has no ticket or ID. She insists she comes every week, but cannot remember the shopkeeper's name. It's like a strange game of guess the pawn shop guy's name. I mean, I come in here like every week on Saturday. Really? What's my name? As things toast up, our main character loses it, and the shopkeeper, getting fed up, kicks her out in a hurry. Exit stage left with flair. I jumped over the counter. I got her ass out of here. A lot of things didn't call me. You ain't gonna call me that But hold on, the drama does not end there. This lady goes full on crazy mode, drops her pants, and starts peeing in public. Yep, it's like a wild comedy show right in the pawn shop. I got a piss, real piss. Because of the wonderful human being. And now, fast forward to another day, we have got a classic couple, a guy with a steel bracelet and an angry wife. He tries to sell his bling, but the shopkeeper is not interested at all. It's like trying to find a puck riding a unicorn. No, what you mean? I be tripping. No, you be tripping. All right. Enter the wife, bursting in with a storm of punches on her husband. It's like a funny TV show, but with more potential and less laughter. Ah, pawn shop life, where every visit is like a crazy reality show that never quite makes it to the big screen. Weird dude fighting. So, there's this pawn shop, right? And it's like a wild show with all kinds of characters. First, there's this weird dude trying to sell ancient TVs like it's still the 90s. The shopkeeper looks at him like he just stepped out of a time machine. On that, on that, my man. Listen, my Don't control the that man. You understand? But stay. It gets crazier. Two guys walk in, all proud, claiming their broken DVD player is a space-age radio talking to aliens. They're living in a world where aliens prefer radio waves over texts, apparently. I've been, I got a transistor radio that communicate with aliens. This <laughs> communicates with aliens. Now, this crazy guy got frustrated and played a dramatic floor scene. On the alert of police threatening, the first guy, frustrated that his old TV is not a hit, starts tossing stuff around, thinking he's at a rock concert, not a pawn shop. The shopkeeper stays chill, like this is just another day at the office. Crazy guy points at his broken TV, yelling, It's our aliens' fault! I guess aliens have bad taste in shows. When he jumped on me, told my now, here comes Drama Queen. She's upset about her receipt and instead of talking it out, she decides the pawn shop is her personal stage. Security gets called, but she pulls a full-blown dramatic scene, floor and all. Bravo, lady, bravo. And just when you think the madness is over, in comes Mr. Candy Bar Drama. He wants his favorite tree, threatens the dealing machine, and leaves everyone wondering if he's from the planet hungry. Maybe in his world, chocolate is as vital as oxygen. You want me to break this piece of crap, dude? Seriously, no. touch that shit. I was. I touched, uh -huh. you know what? He seems like he's so frustrated with his life that's such a crazy scene. Life in this pawn shop is like a comedy, a live sitcom where every customer is a quirky character. 
Who needs a TV when you've got this real life absurdity? Oh, you gonna throw my wallet like that, man? Since you wanna do something. Don't throw my damn- Guard throw the decent man? Hey, listen up, everyone. So, there's this guy, right? He looks all nice and friendly, like a cozy cup of tea on a lazy Sunday. But here's the twist. He's about as real as a fake $3 bill. So, he waltzes in the pawn shop, acting like he's the king of the joint, convinced the shopkeeper is running a museum instead of a store. You run things right here is an old time in the past. We got a new thing going on right now. No, you Watch this, the shopkeeper is just doing his thing, like a pro who has seen it all. He's like a master of selling stuff, and in walks Mr. Smooth Talker, thinking the shopkeeper is stuck in the past. Past what? This is a pawn shop, not a time machine. I call it a business opportunity. I'm not interested. You old There's man, you and you guys are running it. Now, this guy claims he's got a business opportunity for the shopkeeper, but poor guy, the shopkeeper could not watch less. It's like trying to sell a microwave to a caveman. All the shopkeeper wants to do is pawn stuff, not get caught up in weird deals can leave nicely or we can throw your ass out. I tried coming Nobody in Nobody comes here. in here shaking me down. Enter the big tough security guard, the pawn shop's own superhero. He comes out of nowhere, no cape, just a serious attitude, grabbing Mr. Con Artist by the collar. He throws him out like a hawk grabbing a rabbit. The shopkeeper watches, tropical popcorn in hand, as the sneaky guy is kicked out faster than you can say bad business pitch. I'll be back in this. All right, come on back. So, there you have it folks, a funny story of a wannabe business guy trying to mess with a pawn shop. Lesson learned, never mess with a shopkeeper who just wants to do his thing, especially when there's a security guard ready to kick you out in style. You make sure that mother never comes back in here, you understand? No problem, sir. You had a choice to be able to make this- Siblings gone wild. I don't want to hear it. All I want to hear is the two of you get in my office. In a small pawn shop on Elm Street, things got crazy, like confetti flying at a circus. Mandy, the shopkeeper's daughter, and her brother decided to settle their brother-sister squabble with a wild fight right in the middle of the store. People looking at old vases and guitars suddenly set up themselves watching an unanticipated wrestling match. She's out of control. She's the out of my deal. You're both out of control. Shut up. Shut up. Mandy swung an old dusty lamp like it was a cowboy's brother defending himself with a broken guitar neck. Customers did not know whether to hide or start recording the madness. It was like a strange show called Siblings Gone Wild Pawn Shop Edition. Then their wise dad, the shopkeeper, appeared, looking completely shocked. He gathered Mandy and Jake into his office, ready to scold them. But as he started talking, the embarrassment from their rags in front of customers turned his face as red as a stop sign. He stepped into my deal. And I closed it! With I closed it! I, I swear to God, I'm gonna smack you. He warned them, you're in big trouble when we get home, shaking his finger like a school principal scolding naughty students. Little did he know, his office was about to turn into the next battleground for their sibling showdown. I allow my employees to do it, and for sure, my son and daughter should not be doing it. While the shopkeeper tried to get things under control, brother and sister kept on fighting, using office supplies as a weapon. Staplers became like flying missiles, and pens turned into swords in their little duel. Get out of my store right this minute you guys go home and think about it i do not want to finally losing his patience the shopkeeper sent his troublesome kids home for a serious punishment but the journey home turned into another battleground really it's enough this is the first time i ever had to send ashley and seth home walking down the street brother and sister continued arguing loudly catching the attention of people passing by it was like a scene from a funny tv show where the shopkeeper's kids turned a regular trip home into a crazy sibling battle show your fault. My fault. Yeah, your fault. My yeah, fault. Seriously, what's wrong? Pawn Star is losing control. Yeah, I was wanna see how much I could pawn this for. And how much you looking for? Hey there, folks, get ready for the craziest episode of Pawn Stars Gone Wild. Our main guy, the dude with a shaved head and a forehead tattoo that says life choices, walks into the redeem shop like a whirlwind on a mission. Armed with a ring and a talent for turning simple deals into a comedy show, he's about to give us a wild ride. I can't overpay you. Attitude. I'm not. I'm listening to her conversation. As our crazy guy and the shop manager go at it, it's like watching a play by hyperactive squirrels. The lady, probably the boss, accidentally jumps into the argument. Our hero, the confusion expert, embarrasses her for joining a conversation that was not even happening with her. Real disrespectful. You I'm not a talk to people. I came, like you, you asked, to, I you asked. Hold on. It gets crazier. 
Not satisfied with a regular argument, the crazy guy decides negotiations need a personal touch. He starts pointing fingers at her guards, her brother, and maybe even the keeper for good measure. Whereas your punk ass brother is him too. What's up? We're here, mother. And just when he thought things couldn't get sillier, our hero storms into a pawn shop, maybe trying to take over the world with pawn stuff. The twist? He starts threatening the shopkeeper's son. Move aside, there's a new playwright in town armed with a fake ring and a weird sense of humor. Mother I don't give a about you, your daughter, your son, nobody. Now get ready for the main event, a hilarious hand-to-hand -hand brawl in the pawn shop. Imagine two grown-ups wrestling over a pawn ring like it's the one ring from the Lord of the Rings. It's a laugh-out-loud scene that makes us wonder if we accidentally stumbled onto the set of a sitcom pilot. In the big picture, this crazy adventure might not be museum-worthy, but it leaves us with one question. Who needs reality TV when you can have the unpredictability of everyday pawn shop deals? But I didn't put my hands on your son. Did you see him threatening somebody's life? I threatened his life. Women shouting. In the wild world of the pawn shop, things get pretty crazy. It all started with an angry lady charging in, super determined to get back her ring that her not-so-great husband had pawned. She was mad, and she let everyone know it. I just want to come in, pay for it, and get my ring back. Did you make a pleasure part? Get me my ring back, she shouted, hitting the counter window with each word. The person behind the counter tried to talk her down, hiding behind the glass and desperately trying to calm her down. It was like a big showdown with a bunch of old stuff around. You are not. Just go back I'm there not. and give me my How hard is it? You can't just go back there and type just when it felt like things could not get crazier, in walked in a chubby lady holding a vacuum and clearly upset about something. She talked calmly at first, but then out of nowhere, she went nuts and used the vacuum hose to attack the shopkeeper's hair. It was chaos, and a guard had to step in to fix things. Look, because he oh, 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 excuse me, excuse me, nothing. And if that was not wild enough, a teenager showed up, proudly showing off a microphone he said he got at a concert. The person running the shop did not buy it, thinking the story might be made up. The air got tense as if they wondered if the rock and roll treasure was legal. I have a gentleman down here who is trying to sell me some microphones. Are you missing some? But wait, there's more. A lady with a fake baby bump come in, looking for a deal on a chair. The shopkeeper offered to help her take it to her car, but then disaster struck. The fake baby bump fell off, and the lady freaked out, running to her car and leaving the shopkeeper confused with the abandoned chair. And so, the crazy stories at the pawn shop kept going. It was like a fest with weird characters and strange situations. Every day brought a new surprise, and it was always a good reason to laugh at how weird life can be. Fake Ring Pawn in the funny world of pawn shops where dreams get crushed and treasures are shifted like gossip in a hair salon, our main character Bob walks in super excited. Watch him smiling from ear to ear, practically skipping into the pawn shop. His eyes sparkled with excitement, and his way showed he was on top of the world. Little did he know his excitement was about to crash like a squirrel on roller skates. Uh, well, actually, I'm not doing so good. No? My grandma just passed. Bob proudly showed off his prized possession, a ring that little did he know was about as real as a $3 bill. The shopkeeper's face went from serious to trying not to burst into laughter. Do you want to be able to get it back? Yeah. How much are you looking for? Is this enough to pay rent? How much is it? It was like being at a comedy show waiting for the big punchline. Suddenly, Bob's happy face turned into a super sad one. His big grin twisted into a really sad scowl, and his eyes looked betrayed like a toddler denied a cookie. The shopkeeper could sense a big emotional storm coming and got ready for the impact. And then it happened. It's not real gold. So you saying it? Basically, I set up here and went. Bob, in a crazy move, started arguing. Picture him waving his fake ring like a lawyer with evidence, while the shopkeeper tried to explain the harsh variety. But hold on, there's more. In a sitcom style twist, Bob did not make a convincing argument. Instead, he silenced the shopkeeper with a bunch of unexpected and really inappropriate insults. I'm trying to help you solve like, what your you issue. Mean? Lower your voice. Don't Lower your tell voice. Me Lower what your voice. Now, here comes the hero, the security guard. He rushed in like a knight in shiny polyester, diving Bob to the ground with a style that said he would watch a lot of wrestling matches. It was so funny that people could not decide whether to laugh or be shocked. You got me f***ed up. No, let's go. Stop. Yeah, get, let me go. Let me go, man. Artifacts interesting pawn. 
In the weird world of pawn shops where strange and everyday things mix, a guy with a shaved head walked in holding Native American artifacts like they were super precious. He moved in like he was strutting down a museum runway, making a gentle chinking sound as he laid the items on the counter, all set to make a deal. Got a few Native American artifacts here for you. Uh, this is a tomahawk. Right the guy running the shop, always looking a bit puzzled, checked out the artifacts with a mix of interest and doubt. He looked at the shaved head guy, kind of asking, are you really okay with selling these? The shaved head guy just stared back, totally serious about making this deal. It's closer to you. <laughs> While checking out the items, the shopkeeper noticed something strange. One of the artifacts had a tiny face carved into it. The shopkeeper could not resist acting like an art expert. I agree with you. <laughs> it's true, it looks just like her. He held up the piece dramatically, squinting at it like it was the most important thing ever. Agitated, the shopkeeper rushed to talk to his friend, another pawn shop proprietor. They had a lively converse, comparing the sculpted face to commodity importance, looking at it like it held some amazing secret. The shaved head guy caught in their weird discussion, just scowled. 90 bucks? No, actually, I'm not interested. Surprisingly, the shopkeeper decided to compare the car face with the features of his friend's lady co-worker. It got super funny as they both laughed, saying it looked exactly like her. The poor lady heard them and got all embarrassed, saying, Oh no! The pawn shop, usually a quiet place for odd things, turned into a stage for a funny show about artifacts and unexpected lookalikes. He was not joking. He was rude. You can't close the deal because your ego gets in the way. Man Stealing Spotlight Hey, gather around, folks, for the newest incident of crazy deals at the pawn shop. Now, get ready for the crazy part. A third guy struts in, no messing around. He pulls out a life-size silver surfer figure. Yeah, a shiny metallic surfer dude stealing the spotlight in the pawn shop. The dealers are stupefied. They did not sign up for a Marvel show. I hear you guys buy silver. We do. That's a silver surfer. But the third guy's a real showman. He starts pitching the silver miracle like he is selling a priceless masterpiece. Check out the silver surfer, the only surfer who will not steal your waves, but might catch your soul for a fair price. Seriously, this guy should have been a late night TV host. Uh, they made 1,500 of these, and this is literally just a regular manic. Watch this, a quirky guy walks in with a jar full of graveyard dirt. Yeah, you heard me right, graveyard dirt. The kind of dodge during your spooky midnight graveyard adventures. He slaps it on the shelf like it's the newest smartphone, and the shopkeeper's just staring at it like it's the key to living forever. This dirt was given to my grandmother from her friend. She's kind of like a faith healer. Now, here's the fun part. They chat, they bargain, and bam, the deal's done for just 12 bucks. Black Friday's got nothing on this deal. How much under $50 are you gonna go? 20 bucks. $12. But wait, there's more. Another dude shows up, jar in hand, claiming he has supernatural powers. The shopkeeper's probably thinking he accidentally opened a mystical pawn shop. And guess what? Another easy deal. It's like a magical curiosity trader at a Harry Potter yard sale. If you'd like to buy part of it, quarter of it for 25 I think a quarter of it for 25 So there you have it, folks. Another wild day of strange deals and supernatural surprises at the original pawn shop. Stay tuned for further unbelievable exchanges next time, maybe with a rock from Thor's Hammer, available for the right price, of course. Diamond Pawning No, it's better than that. Bam! That is 18th century. Ah, gather around, my friends, and witness the spectacle of the century at the local pawn shop. Watch this, a man decked out in onyx diamond spectacles struts in just like he stepped out of a magic show. Hey, abracadabra, he's here to sell his bling eyewear to the unsuspecting shopkeeper with a flourish that would make jealous. Hey, Rick, what the hell's a 4J? <laughs> I don't know a whole lot about it. My dad actually. But hold your laughter because there's another character entering the stage a young lad with a hairstyle that screams, I woke up like this, and it's fabulous. Uh, as far as I know, it's uh, made by Hudson Bay, somewhere probably around 1700s. I don't know a whole lot about it. He's got this gorgeous item, and he's ready to convince the shopkeeper that it's the eighth wonder of the world. Uh, probably about 100000 You know. The catch? He's so young, the shopkeeper is ready to pay him in bit and pocket lint. It looks like it have, might have been a trade piece to the Indians. That's Venetian glass. Yeah. Classic mix-up. Kid thinks he's getting rich, but all he's getting is a sugar rush. 
How are you doing, gentlemen? Oh, pretty good. I have a bronze statue I like to sell. Do you know much about it? Now, the real gem of hilarity unfolds as a man with a statue tries to pawn it off. I see this all the time. People will bring in things like this, and I tell them it's not real, and they just think I'm a call. The shopkeeper, with a skeptical eyebrow raised, declares it's a fake. Oh dear, cue the fireworks. I don't believe you. Okay, I mean, I just don't see 1800s here. It's an American found. The seller goes bonkers, shouting like he just discovered the secret of immortality, and the pawn shop turns into a verbal battlefield. It's all right, Antoine. I got it. I got it. But wait, there's a twist. The security guard swoops in, ready to break up the impending brawl. Just when you think it's about to get serious, another shopkeeper plays the peacemaker, diffusing the situation before the security guard has to do his best superhero print. Crisis help, and the pawn shop returns to its regularly scheduled programming of weird and wacky transactions. Ah, the drama, the comedy, the onyx diamond spectacles. Who knew a pawn shop could be this entertaining? It's a magical place indeed. Oh, he's walking in. Right. All right, buckle up, because we have got a real life cleaner working at the pawn shop. Picture this, dad storms out of the place like he just found out they do not give out rewards for being a loyal customer. His face is a mix of disappointment and the realization that he needs to find a new favorite pawn shop. Dad's got a bag in hand, marching away like someone who just got the news that their favorite TV show got the boot. I went over and visited the uh, Pontiac store. It's on the market. It's what? No time for small talk, no time for goodbyes. Just a one-way ticket to I'm so disappointed I can't even look at you town. We need to talk about Pontiac. We need to cut our losses and just sell the thing already. It's not. Meanwhile, the son and daughter are trying their best to play emotional baggage handlers, yelling after dad as he walks away. He's made some phone calls already. He's gonna kill you. But it's like trying to catch air with a butterfly net. He is in his own world of betrayal and will not give them the time of day. Get that camera. It's like a classic comedy scene with dad yelling at the camera crew to back off. Can I talk to you? Get the hell out of here, son. Can I talk to you? Close really? the door. Cut to dad's office, where he's basically putting up an invisible do not disturb sign. The son, playing the brave hero, tries to enter the disappointment, but dad is having none of it. You know what, Seth? You have work to do. I have my job to do. Go do your work. Leave me alone, he shouts, as if his office is his own private quiet zone. There you have it, folks. A sitcom level family feud right in the pawn shop. Crazy woman arguing. Just getting out my golf clubs. You sold the clubs to us. You didn't pawn them. I did not sell my clubs. So there's this crazy woman causing a fracas at the front counter, and she's on a charge. Is it world peace? Is it finding the cure for baldness? No, she's in a one woman show determined to fight the receptionist like it's the championship bout of the century. If you would have looked at the receipt I don't that was here to hear the you, lecture, I did not pawn my club. I don't have them. The receptionist, being a champ, is ignoring crazy lady as if she's an annoying message on Tinder. I clearly have a clear head. I've been sober a lot longer than you're today. If you pass your drug test, I don't. But crazy lady is not giving up. She's not just arguing anymore. Now she's on to roasting the receptionist's religion. Who knew religious debates were part of the job? Learn something new every day, I guess. I never sold my golf okay, so club. So here's, here's, here's the record. Sir, yes. it would be very... Hold up. Here comes the boss to the deliverance. Okay, let me let me make this perfectly honest. Let, let me let make me, it perfectly clear. Well, you're profiting a lot from people. This lady claims she's not just better than the receptionist. She's practically as smart as Einstein with a dash of mouth. The boss, understandably upset about the insult to his team, explodes like a volcano. Cue the shouting match of the century. Out of here. Management Don't term. talk about my you religion, you bitch. Get your hands off of me. Eventually, boss man lays down the law and tells crazy lady to hit the road. But nope, she's not budging. Enter our idol, the security guard. Spoiler, he's in for a surprise. Get your hands off me. Get your hands off of me. In a plot twist straight out of a WWE match, crazy lady goes full on a Hulk mode on the security guard. Felix, let her go. Oh, did it hurt you? It's a smackdown of epic proportions, with security guard probably regretting not taking the self-defense class at the community center. Ma'am, no. go f yourself. 
And there you have it, a front row ticket to the wild circus of office life. Who needs Netflix when you have the reception desk drama delivering nonstop entertainment? Deals that went horribly wrong. This piece of junk I bought in here just a couple days ago don't work now, it's broken. Welcome to the pawn shop. A customer came to the store and said that they had bought a product here two days ago, but it's now broken and they want to return it. Do you have your receipt? I don't have a receipt. I didn't think I needed it. When asked by Les if they had the receipt, the customer replied, I thought I wouldn't need it, so I threw it away. Like I said, there's no that. receipt. There's no money. Woo, it looks suspicious. Les asked if you had any receipt, we can replace it, but our big man kept insisting on getting his money back. Look here, man, you better back off too, oh, man. Like, Don't oh, touch him. But as we know, it's against store policy, so Les denied. This makes the big man unhappy. Don't touch Come on. What is going on? Is he gonna have a fight? Yep, he is up to our expectations. But the bodyguard folded his hand and threw him out. Les warned him with his dialogue. Don't come in here threatening us. We don't go for that The bigger they are, the harder they fall. Don't come here threatening us. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. Angry Les. Son of a bitch. Where the is he? Rich, he's on the floor. Hello, let's see another interesting pawn unfolding at the pawn shop today. It seems like Les is searching for the rich individual, questioning why people are waiting to pay for their merchandise. According to Les, those waiting are losing money because of the wait. I gotta sit and lay away all day long and just wait for something to happen? I needed to take care of something that was out on the... Rich is providing an explanation, but Les is in anger, escalating the conversation. Yeah, we're little screw-ups, Rich. Compared to what I've done for you for 25 freaking years? And the discussion is becoming more intense. I just want to start off by saying I'm sorry. Okay. I didn't mean to, you know, show any disrespect to your family. Uh, I'm sorry for not being the the employee you wanted me to be. Wait, wait, wait. There's still a lot left. Rich needs to apologize, and the generous Les forgives him. The only reason you're here right now is because we've been together for almost 25 years, and that is the only reason I'm going to give you another chance stating that he's been forgiven due to his 25 years of service. I'm not gonna call the cops on my husband. I'm coming to you to get my ring back. The woman expresses frustration, stating that she can't call the police on her husband. She pleads for her ring, but Ashley refuses to provide information without proper identification. Go back I'm there and give me my How hard is it? You can't just go back there and type in a name? Do you shut However, the woman begins causing a scene outside, creating a commotion about her ring. Can someone really do such a thing? My son pawned my mom's ring. That's the only thing I had left for my mom. A woman comes to the pawn shop and claims that her son pawned her mother's ring. She seeks forgiveness for her son's actions, but Les informs her that her son didn't pawn any ring. I am attorney Kyle Dupuy. Retain me to represent her in regard to a ring. This is a counterfeit ticket. Despite Les's clarification, the woman insists that her son pawned the ring and demands information, threatening to involve her lawyer. But who knows Les is fully prepared and informs her lawyer that her receipt is fake. So now we just liars and we just come I'm here. I'm not saying that you are. So I'm trying to say my son a lie. And it turns out that the woman was a liar. Death threat at store. You gonna what? You heard what I said. I didn't hear what you said. Tell me what you're gonna do to me. The owner, Les Gold's warning to watch your language, sets the stage for a tense encounter. Have my face for me. Who the fuck you oh, you're talking to, mother? You ain't supposed to touch me. Come on, man, let's go, baby. Okay. As the bodyguard starts escorting the customer out, the situation quickly escalates with insults and resistance. The atmosphere becomes charged as the owner, Les, questions the motives behind the physical altercation. Kill you, mother. Tensions reach a boiling point as the customer issues threats, prompting the owner Les to step in. The intervention leads to a physical altercation involving both the owner Les Gold and the bodyguard. Call the cops. Call the cops. Call the cops. Recognizing the severity of the situation, the owner instructs Ashley to call the police, seeking external assistance to handle the escalating conflict. In a surprising turn, the assistance call leads to a revelation about the customer's frustration due to an expired pawn. The guy lost it, but he apologized in front of the police. When confronted by the police, the customer offers an apology. The owner, Les Gold, understanding the emotional turmoil caused by the loss of possessions, decides to let the individual go. 
This dramatic episode at American Jewelry showcases the unpredictable nature of human interactions and the challenges faced by business owner Les Gold in maintaining a secure and controlled environment. Women Demand More Gold Welcome to the Pawn Store, where routine transactions take an unexpected turn into a riveting drama. Hi, how are you today? I'm fine. I'd like to pawn that, please. I'm gonna get 250 today. Oh, they usually give me three. A woman enters the scene eager to pawn a bracelet, seeking $300. However, the attendant offers $250, citing a perceived decrease in gold prices, setting the stage for a confrontational exchange. Uh, that's not my problem if gold is dropped. Well, you're gonna get 250 No! Not 250. Get a manager. 250. No, not 250. I want to speak to your manager. Faced with the customer's disrespectful insistence on the full $300, the attendant seeks assistance from manager Ashley. And you need how much? Three. Okay. Just because the price of gold has gone down, that's not my problem. The situation escalates as Ashley reiterates the market conditions. Infuriated, the customer accuses Ashley of cowardice and unleashes a barrage of verbal abuse. Where'd she go? I want my money back. Give me my extra money. Gold has gone down. Give me my money. Is she serious? Yeah. Maintaining composure, Ashley brings in her bodyguard for support in the face of the escalating confrontation. Undeterred by insults, Ashley asserts her position, vehemently denying any fear. The clash between the two intensifies, providing viewers with a front row seat to the unexpected drama unfolding in the pawn store. Let's go. Take your bracelet and have a day. Everybody in here. The situation reaches a boiling point, leading to the decision to ask the unruly customer to leave. Defiant, she exits while continuing her disrespectful behavior, leaving an air of tension and disbelief in the store. In the closing segment, a seemingly routine purchase transforms into an entertaining and unexpected drama, showcasing the unpredictability of everyday interactions in the pawn shop. This captivating episode not only highlights the challenges faced by pawn shop staff, but also underscores the potential for routine transactions to escalate into captivating and unforeseen narratives, leaving viewers intrigued and eagerly anticipating the next twist in this pawn store saga. Fake Earrings Pawn How you doing? Good. I'm here to pawn these earrings. Okay. In the captivating opening sequence, the pawn shop arena becomes the stage for a riveting drama initiated by two women with a potential spark that catches the audience's attention. The atmosphere thickens as they declare their intention to part with a pair of earrings, setting the tone for an intriguing exchange that promises to unfold. I'm trying to get $350 for them. Why do you need the money? It's none of your business why I need the money. Pawn my mother jewelry. A surprising twist materializes when the women competently pitch their earrings for a substantial $350. However, the owner, Les Gold, innocently inquires about their urgent need for money, inadvertently triggering a sudden and unexpected wave of aggression. The mood shifts dramatically, laying the foundation for a rapid escalation of emotions that leaves viewers on the edge of their seats. You, you ain't even looked at my Do you know that these aren't real? I've been doing this a long time. I can spot a fake from a mile away. Tension mounts as the shocking revelation unfolds. The earrings lack real diamonds. Insults fly back and forth, testing the owner's ability to maintain composure amid the verbal onslaught. The plot thickens with the introduction of an unforeseen character, a bodyguard, adding an intriguing layer to the confrontation and hinting at an imminent turning point in the unfolding narrative. I ain't leaving this till you give me my money. money. The climax peaks as the women staunchly refuse to leave without money, prompting the entrance of the imposing bodyguard. In a stark contrast to the intense hostility, the owner wishes them a nice day, signaling the resolution of this high-stakes encounter. The clash between opposing forces, coupled with unexpected twists, transforms this brief pawn shop transaction into an epic, leaving viewers eager for more in the next installment. Woman Pawning Empty Bottle Woman comes in to sell me a high-end bottle of liquor. The problem was the liquor was gone. Ma'am, I can't use it. A black woman stirs the pawn shop atmosphere by attempting to sell an empty liquor bottle. Unyielding and resistant to external perspectives, she embarks on a heated argument with offensive language becoming a prominent feature of her impassioned dialogue. Give you a hundred dollars. Not worth more than a hundred bucks. There are eight hundred dollars filled with liquor. The intensity peaks as owner Les Gold interjects, introducing an unexpected twist to the narrative. 
While the woman initially values the bottle at $100, Les contends that, with the right liquor, its potential worth skyrockets to an astonishing $800. This revelation adds a layer of complexity to the interaction, challenging the woman's initial valuation and redirecting the trajectory of the argument. The confrontation deepens as the woman accuses Les of exploiting individuals in need for personal gain. Walk up to my baby, dad. Hey baby, don't point your fingers at me. Belittle him and talk about baby, his store. Still, I'm and not talk about However, the dynamics shift dramatically with the entrance of Ashley, Les Gold's daughter. Assertively, Ashley condemns the disrespectful tone directed at her father, effectively roasting the woman in the process. The exchange not only defends the family's honor, but also underscores the emotional intensity within the pawn shop. I don't care you're in my dad's store, and don't you ever think about coming in here you again. Turn your with your alcohol breath and walk your fat out the door now. This captivating episode, brimming with conflicting perspectives and emotions, transforms a seemingly mundane transaction into a 300-word spectacle. The clash of values, the surprising valuation of an empty bottle, and the unexpected intervention of Ashley create a compelling narrative, leaving viewers eagerly anticipating the resolution of this charged pawn shop encounter. That's all for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching till the end. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Also, share with your friends. See you in the next video.